an all-Canadian final, and I am scared to death, guys. Like, I am just scared to death. And in a way, it's like, okay, if we lose, we have, what, four cups in six years? If we win, it's five cups in six years, which is unbelievable. I don't recall a team being better than them in the regular season. This is season 11, and I do not recall a team having acquired 128 points in a season. Second best was the Bruins, who were 10 wins behind them and also lost in the first round. But 60-win season. Like, we had a 56-win season. I couldn't believe it. 60 wins for this Toronto team. I don't know how on earth we are going to compete with them. I genuinely don't. Like, I know they went to seven games... I know they went to seven games with uh, Columbus, but I just, I don't know what to expect from the series. I also don't know what I'm doing on the menus. As far as our lines go, I have made a couple changes. The second line is now Patrick Kane, Jonathan Drouin. We're going to put SEO Wensu back on that second line. The third line is now Doyle Matthews, who is kind of struggling a bit. I mean, he has 11 points, which is good. But I think Yoensu might be better on that second line at the moment, playing with Drew and Kane. We will see. Sloan is also rounding out the third line. The fourth line, Backlund and McMillan are back. We have sent Bakar and Kalinin back to Utica. But those are our lines for this cup final. Let's take a look and see what the Maple Leafs have to offer. 91, 94, 91 for the ratings. So on paper, we are the better team. And also, as you can see for the first time, uh, we do not have home ice advantage in this playoffs. And I don't know how big of a factor that'll be. But this is the Toronto team. Are you fucking serious? That won 60 games. Max Domi, 88 overall, has 15 points, one goal, and 14 assists. Their top guy is high top nine forward sniper, Lubomir Obsip. EA really likes that name, don't they? 90 overall, he has, okay, I thought it was going to be better than that, 14 points. And 82 overall sniper, Seth Jovanoski, medium top nine potential, he has 15 points. Okay, so Domi, I mean, it's, like, it's good, but like, what, Jovanoski? What the fuck is that? Second line is Tobias Reeder, who has eight points, Mitch Marner, who has eight points, and Kasperi Kapitan, who has seven like that's a decent line overall wise they're not putting up points at a tremendous rate third line is Byron Cahill he only has three points six points for Jake Kriske and then our old friend Cole Castles has five points their fourth line Yoni Tamela nine points eight points for Frederick Gauthier and ten points for another old friend of ours Victor Safranov Castles and Safranov on that team, like, I was more scared of the Sharks, by far. I mean, yeah, like, Domi and Obsid are great, but, I mean, Castle's, you know, 87, but he's not a big-time point getter. Although, I would love to have him still for our fourth line right about now. My God, I would love to have Cole Castles again on this team. But how? How did this team win 60 games? Oh, that could have something to do with it. Morgan Riley is a 96 he has 10 points so far he plays with connor carrick in 88 who has 10 points second pairing andrew nielsen and jordan sambrook sambrook in 87 and then they have yuri kondradiev with jody kwiatkowski um so obviously like that top pairing is great riley and carrick sambrook's a good defender and then it really falls off with 283s and in eight, how the fuck did this lineup win 60 games? Anton Bebo's their starter. He was somebody we were looking at. We went with uh, Skinner instead. He has a 947 save percentage, all right. So that's a part of the reason Bebo's having a really good postseason. And, of course, Anton Forsberg, the ultimate talisman from the Bruins series. Scratched players, Jordan Kiru. Our old buddy Jordan Kiru is there with Dimitro Timoshov. 80 overall like they have a good team a very well-rounded team like no extreme weak links aside from the guy on the third pair defensive line I just like it's a good team but how the hell did they win four more games 
than our Canucks team that won 56 games. I don't get it. I genuinely can't understand it. Do they have injuries? Nobody's injured. Like, that is their team. And they won 60 games. I don't know what to think. I genuinely don't know what to think. I don't know if I should be scared or not. But it's time. Game 1 in Toronto. This all-Canadian final. Who knows what to expect here. Let's do this first period of Game 1. And we get the opening goal. Yasina. Deserving. Because that is a big-time goal. And that was an ass-whooping of a first period. 16 shots to 5. And the Canucks are up 1-0. Let's hope that holds. Second period. They really bounce back with 12 shots. We're out shooting them 24-7. But it's still 1-0 on the back of Yasina's goal. Let's do this third period. Please, boys, hold on. Hold on, Mahalik. You have been the man so far in these playoffs. Not as good of a save percentage as Bebo. But that changes. Seven minutes to go. Toronto catching up in shots. And Kriski gets the goal on Mahalik. Are we going overtime? No, we're not. Maybe. Essahal, please hold on. And there it is. Holy shit. Whew. And that is game one. <laughs> a dominant first period. They have 26 shots in the second and third periods. Kriski ties it with 5.29 to go. And then Essahal. The big-time player, Essa Hall, gives us a 2-1 victory. Brian Mahalik, a very deserving first star. Man, that was, I think that's been the key to our playoff run. You know, we've had a good team all season offensively and defensively, but that's what we needed for this team to be successful, is a big-time performance, just league average goaltending, if not better, from Mahalik. And we're getting it so far, but that's just one game. Three to go. Game two in Toronto. First period, let's see what happens. And Mitch Marner gets the opening goal from a fucking terrible angle. Okay, second period, and nope. Nothing doing there, still scoreless. Shut out now, despite 18 shots. And that sets up this third period. Oh boy, power play, please. That would be the perfect timing, and it's not going to happen there. 13 minutes to go. We are still scoreless. Anton Bebo standing on his head. And I don't know if it's going to happen here, guys. I don't know if it's going to happen. Two-minute warning, and that's it. Man, that is it. A 34-save shutout for Anton Bebo, and we drop game two by the score of one to nothing. And this series is tied as it shifts to Vancouver for the first time and that is definitely how Toronto won 60 games is Anton Bebo and that's certainly I mean here's the thing I took Skinner from Columbus they still made the conference final if I took Bebo they might have still made the con they might have still made it anyway but Forsberg I don't know I, I feel like I made the wrong choice but then again we'd end up being we'd end up playing Skinner and Columbus right now most likely anyway so I, I don't even know what I do know though is that it's time for the first period of game three on home ice. Can we actually beat Bebo is the question. First period and we can. It's Pascal Plot with the goal. 13 shots to six. Bebo gets beat from the point quite a bit. Maybe I should uh, maybe I should go into team strategies. I don't do it too often, but maybe I should go into team strategies, change the power play look to um the umbrella to get more point shots. I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. Second period. Can we keep the lead? And we can. Danton Heinen and Jonathan Drouin made it 3 0 at one point, both from god awful angles. Oh my god. Tamela gets a goal back for them. They only have 10 shots through two periods. They are down 3 1. I cannot believe where Drouin and Heinen scored from. And all of a sudden, I think we, we might be figuring out Bebo just a little bit. Third period with a two-goal lead. Early power play for Toronto. That is successfully killed. Another power play for Toronto. We kill that off, too. Our penalty kill's been amazing. Third time. Will it be the charm? It won't be. Our penalty kill is just on fire. Five minutes to go. Still 3-1. And barring a miracle. And Sloan gets the empty netter. 
4-1 final in Game 3 and the Vancouver Canucks take a 2-1 series lead. Two points apiece for Heinen and Drewen and 24 saves for Brian Mahalik and the Canucks have control. Let's see though if we can follow that up here in Game 4 against Toronto and this is the um this is big time like this is a major major game either we're going up 3-1 or the series is tied and essentially becomes a best of three with Toronto having home ice so let's get the job done here boys let's do this first period of game four and it's a uh, who wasn't expecting that yo Wensu and Matthews a minute and four seconds apart Gives us the 2-0 lead, but Jovanovski from a terrible angle beats Mahalik. Again, we limit them to five shots in the first period. Outshot them 15-5. to five. Another point shot goes in for Matthews. And the Canucks take a 2-1 lead into the second period. Let's see what happens, and it's now a 4-1 lead. Austin Matthews, second of the game, and Melvin Doyle out shooting them 25-15. Let's sim this third period. Early power play. We can't get a goal, but then we do. It's McMillan back in the lineup. He finally shows up, and it's a 5-1 lead. Now it's 6-1. Doyle with his second goal of the game. We are killing them in shots, and the Vancouver Canucks are one game away from their fifth title in six years, dominating Toronto. 43 shots to 19, 6-1 final. And now we have three chances to seal it. Three points apiece for Doyle and Sloan. Four points for Austin Matthews. That third line stole the show. Incredible. Yoensu, I feel like he's probably been doing better on the second line. And Matthews fitting right in there on the third line. And Jesus, man, this is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. As you see the point totals, another two points. As the, uh, but man, the series shifts back to Toronto for game five. And it represents the first of our three opportunities to take home the cup. Let's do this. Game five in Toronto. Lord Stanley is in the building. Let's do this. First period of game five. 15 shots to seven, but we're unable to. To take advantage Bebo standing on his head right now keeping his team in it question is how long can he do that let's find out second period two goals Melvin Doyle again and Danton Heinen from the point two nothing and we are 20 minutes away from taking down the president's trophy winners who said that curse was dead <laughs> the curse is right back on and man, we are 14 minutes away. Oh, that's it. That's it. Korolev, the fourth liner, right in front. Reader gets a goal back. But it's 3-1. And I think that's going to do it, guys. I think that's going to do it. The Vancouver Canucks. You know what? Let's just watch it from here. Let's watch it from here. I don't care how many times we've watched it now. I really, really don't. But, man, once again... We are going to be champions. I almost feel like playing goalie again, like I did, uh, or like I wanted to before. But we'll go on the true broadcast cam, sit back, relax, and enjoy yet another victory from this team. Five in six years. If that number's wrong, I'm going to feel like an idiot because I've said it so many times. But crazy. Like I said, man. Like, I almost wish we weren't winning this much because it does seem... God damn it, I forgot to do the... Uh, oh, I forgot to put on coach mode. Uh, select sides, block position. How do I put it on coach? It's after right wing. There we go. Little bit of a technical difficulty. Hopefully Matthew still wins the draw, and he does because he is an absolute beast. But certainly, like, if I... Oh, shit. That was a good cross crease. 
Another chance for McMillan. Oh, Bebo with a big save. A anyway, <laughs> if I were to watch, like, I could fully admit, if I were to watch somebody on YouTube and they won five cups in six years, I would certainly say that there is something fishy about that. But, I mean, the numbers don't lie, you know, with what our team has done. 100 overall offense, I just, I don't know, man. I can't, I can't explain it, but I'm very, very happy with it, especially after the, um, I mean, look at that. Look at the goal scoring. It's unbelievable. But especially after how the Bruins GM mode series went with so many disappointments, for everything to be going our way is just awesome. And hopefully that continues. Chitron with the shot, no goal. Hall, are there, are there any surprise black guys this time? We know Yoensu's black. We don't have too many new players. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. I feel like some people misconstrued that. I was just surprised because he's Finnish. His name is Essa. And you don't see too many black Finns. But that's all I was saying. Shot in on Bebo. A big save. And it's... Turnover, Heinen to Chitrin, who dumps it in. Look at the sportsmanship. We don't need to pile it on. We could just dump the puck in and coast from here. Toronto can barely get into our own zone. Carrick carries in, gets decked, and there they go. See, it's interesting to see this team as Patrick Kane. Snipe it, Kane. Do something or just turn it over. I'm hoping he retires. I mean, he's a UFA at the end of the year anyway. So, Patrick Kane gets one more cut. Par Forstrom is the next captain of this team. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> as much as Essa Hall deserves it, Par Forstrom is my new favorite player on this team. Cole Castles, I am so sorry about the loss. Kiru as well. They pull the goalie. And like I said, man, just to see what the to see what the Leafs were in terms of overalls, knowing that they had 60 wins, I just I went from being scared to being very, very confident, despite the fact with the extra man, they're really pouring it on. Big save there from Mahalik. Forstrom to Druen. Can he get the empty netter? And it's wide. Ah, oh, you jerk. <laughs> that could have been a turnover. Druen a second chance. He misses again. Get off the ice, you hoser. Holy shit, what a hit. Who the fuck was that? Was that Doyle? No, Doyle's the one that scored. Who the fuck leveled that guy? <laughs> that was insane. Jonathan Jerron misses twice. Melvin Doyle's black, too. There we go. I think I saw that. Who, who got the hit? Who's number... Jesus, man. Who the fuck's number 51? If that's even his number. <laughs> uh, you know what? I gotta look at that. That was a ridiculous hit. I know the hitting in this game can be a bit funny sometimes anyway. That was Sloan. Sloan is now my new fan. <laughs> he gets an alternate on the par Forstrom. What a goddamn hit from Sloan. Doyle caps it off. It's 4-1. A Leafs fan's favorite score line. And we are just 15 seconds away from yet another cup. So many changes to this team. Weaker than arguably any team we've ever had with the exception of our big names. And it didn't matter. Three seconds to go. The Vancouver Canucks are once again champions. And if, like I said, I thought this might be the last season, I don't know if it will be because the real-life rosters for the NHL and the AHL are still looking really rough. A lot of teams aren't actually signing anybody. Like, if you look at AHL rosters right now, it's just atrocious. So I don't know for sure... If this will be the last season, we may do another one. We may do another two. There will definitely, as the Con Smythe goes to Brian Mahalik and his terrible mustache, there will definitely be new seasons done before NHL 17 comes out. As far as NHL, uh, as far as the beta goes for NHL 17, I will get you guys a, um, you know, I'll, I'll have footage up for that. I don't think, actually, I know for sure. There isn't anything to do with franchise mode. So we are going to have, what, another two months in between the end of this series, most likely, and NHL 17 being released, unless, of course, uh, the early access weekend, whenever that comes out. But we have plenty of time to do another series. But in the meantime, I'm not exactly dreading having to continue making the series 
when we just keep winning titles at a ridiculous, ridiculous rate. I mean, everything's gone right for us in this series, man. From the drafting to being able to replenish everybody, you know, replenish and replace people. Just unbelievable. And honestly, I don't, I, you know, I was going to end it there. We will go take a look at the playoff stats. This is going to be over a 20-minute video anyway, most likely. We will go look at the final playoff stats. But there you have it. Your Stanley Cup champions once again. 43 shots to 24. The three stars of the game, Doyle, Mahalik, and Tobias Reeder, who gave them a chance, but it was too little, too late. And I, I have to see the final score lines, the final stat lines for this team, some of the goal scorers. Just what a goddamn run. Thank God we avoided Calgary in the second round. That's all I can say. But let's take a look at how our players did here. Jesus. Man, 24 points for Heinen, 23 for Hall, 19 for Chitrin, Drew Wen. Patrick Kane was one hell of a throwaway acquisition with 16 points in the playoffs. Matthews with 16. Forstrom with 15 points. You beauty. Sloan even had 13. Jake Sloan, physical category, 97 body checking. That explains it. Yoensu, only 9 points. And that is definitely... Something I have to look at is finding somebody else for that second line. Maybe if Melvin Doyle, I mean, he's a second line guy already, 23 years old, elite potential. Maybe we give that spot to Melvin Doyle. And then maybe if he doesn't work out, we find somebody else. But there you get a look at the point totals for this team. And for the hell of it, we'll sim up just so that we can get a look at the awards and properly complete this season before most likely starting over fresh with another draft and a new season. The Springfield Falcons, Springfield, I hate you, win the Calder Cup, but the Vancouver Canucks, once again, Stanley Cup champions. Let's look at the awards, and there you see it. I believe our first title win is now, or our first title win is off the board. That is five in six years. Four of the last President's Trophies have gone to us or Toronto, which is absolutely insane the art ross trophy goes to tyler soy in calgary the heart trophy goes to morgan riley again you can see why at least with riley and the way bebo was playing for a lot of the series why they won as many games as they did he also wins the norris soy wins the lady bing hayes is the rookie of the year the con smythe trophy of course to me hollick the vesna trophy to bebo that explains a lot as well as the jennings Masterton goes to someone in Ottawa. Bleakley wins the Selkie. Riley, the Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard Trophy for the second year in a row goes to Danton Heinen. Did we get any hardware down in the AHL? I don't know. Well, we did. We did. Hans Bakar wins the Fred T. Hunt Memorial Trophy. And I think that is it. But guys... What can I say at this point? I don't want to keep rambling. Again, I thank you all so much for watching this series, watching this episode. I don't care how many of them you've watched. If you've watched even two minutes of one of these episodes, you know I appreciate it. As always, though, if you have enjoyed, make sure to drop a like. Helps out the channel, can help the channel grow, as can subscribing. If you haven't already, and the positive, you get to continue following this ridiculous team and their ridiculous amount of success. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in Season 12.